following program was made possible by the generosity of those who have determined to hold fast to the traditional Catholic faith and religion as professed and practiced by the Roman Catholic Church before the disasters of the Second Vatican Council and the so-called New Order of Mass. Hello, welcome to a special edition of What Catholics Believe, a rather brief one, I hope, but a program meant to point out something very important, I think an essential point that people need to understand. In the statements made by the critics of Archbishop Vigano, as you know, Archbishop Vigano has accused Francis of having covered up the depredations of Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, so actually being complicit in the sexual abuse of the young people in their church. And of course, Francis has said he's not going to make any comment about it, and he's not ceased to comment about it in the meantime. <clears throat> but shortly after, Shortly after all of this came to light, uh, Cardinal Blaise Supich in Chicago made a statement that is very revealing. It drew a lot of criticism at the time, but I think the criticism was uh, misplaced in a sense that the focus should have rather been on, on the sense of what he was saying rather than how offensive it was. You see, Cardinal Supic said with regard to Francis answering the accusation of Archbishop Vigano that he, Francis, knew about and, you might say, aided and abetted the abuse that was uh, going on at the hands of Cardinal McCarrick. Cardinal Supic said, the Pope has a bigger agenda. He's got to get on with other things of talking about the environment and protecting migrants and carrying on the work of the church. We're not going down a rabbit hole on this. Now this, uh, Cardinal Supic said in an interview with Chicago's NBC station, there was a tremendous uh, uproar, I would say, not only from traditional Catholics, but also the conservative Novus Ordos, and, and even those who are not Catholic at all, saying, what? So, the, the Francis has more important things to do than to deal with the sexual abuse crisis in the church. More important for him is uh, dealing with the environment. It's more important for him to address the problem of migrants and protect them. Uh, this is what is, is to carry on the work of the church, that rather than take care of those who are victims of sexual abuse by the clergy in the Novus Ordo, well, you have to put the statement of Cardinal Supic together with uh, the letter of Cardinal Ouellette and others who have come out against Archbishop Vigano. And you find the argument of Cardinal Ouellette in his letter, his open letter to Archbishop Vigano, calling him to repent calling him to return to communion with the Holy See, practically, um, accusing him of doing what he did for political purposes and so on. Um, you have to look and see what Cardinal Ouellette says, again, was, was Archbishop Vigano's great crime. <clears throat> and as you read the letter of Cardinal Ouellette, directed against Archbishop Vigano, Again, he, he shows his hand here, and it's basically the same message as Cardinal Supic. <clears throat> this is what Ouellette says to Vigano. Dear Pontifical Representative Emeritus, I tell you frankly <clears throat> that to accuse Pope Francis of having covered up knowingly the case of an alleged sexual predator, and therefore of being an accomplice to the corruption that afflicts the church, to the point that he could no longer continue to carry out his reform, as the first shepherd of the church, appears to me from all points unbelievable and without any foundation. You see, in the statement of Cardinal Ouellette lies the key to all of this 
vitriol that is being heaped upon Archbishop Vigano. It tells you what Vigano's great crime is. To accuse Francis of having aided and abetted sexual predation and being an accomplice in the corruption of the church to the point that he can no longer continue to carry out his reform. That is what they cannot accept. You see what is at stake here, actually, is exactly what Supish says. The reform, the concern with the environment, the concern with the immigrants, this is all part of the reform of the church. It's part of the program that's come out of Vatican II. This is what has to go forward. And we cannot allow this question, this rather trivial question of sexual depredation in the church to distract us from the main goal, from the great mission of Francis. The great mission of Francis must go on at all costs. And even if there is a question of, of sexual predators unleashed on the, among the clergy and uh, even among the bishops, and the cover-up going into the cardinals, and even, even Francis himself, this is simply collateral damage. We simply have to accept this and move on and not allow this to distract us from the real purpose of Francis's pontificate, and that is completing Vatican II and creating the Vatican II Church, creating what some have called Franken Church. This is Francis's mission. We must not allow anything even the sexual predators in the church to distract us from the mission of Francis. Nothing must challenge that mission. Nothing must impair that mission. Nothing must threaten that mission. And you, Vigano, you have threatened the mission of Francis in his great reform. Notice how Cardinal Ouellette ends his letter. If the Pope was not a man of prayer, if he was attached to money, if he favored riches to the detriment of the poor, if he did not demonstrate a tireless energy to welcome all miseries and to address them through the generous comfort of his words and actions, if he did not seek to implement all possible means to announce and to communicate the joy of the gospel to all in the church and beyond her visible horizons, if he did not lend a hand to the families, to the abandoned elderly, to the sick in body and soul, and above all to the youth in their search for happiness, one could prefer someone else, according to you, with a different political or diplomatic approach. But I cannot call into question his personal integrity, his consecration to the mission, and above all the charisma and peace he enjoys through the grace of God and the strength of the risen one. Again, it's all about Francis's mission. See, he's got to complete Vatican II. It's stalled out in their ideas. It's stalled out with John Paul II and with Benedict XVI. They did not push this forward. They held the ground of Vatican II, and they did not exactly fill, push it through to its ultimate conclusion. Francis is the man now chosen. By whom? By the Pact of the Catacombs. Francis is the man chosen. By whom? By the St. Gallen Group. He was elected for this very purpose, to finally push through and to complete the revolution of Vatican II. Nothing must stand in the way. Everything has to be sacrificed. Even the young people, even their seminarians have to be sacrificed on the altars of their lusts, of their homosexual lust. They have to be sacrificed in order to achieve the great goal. They are like the human sacrifices that must be offered to finally bring Baphomet into the sanctuary. Notice what, again, uh, Oulette says here. So that Pope Francis can continue to be recognized for who he is, a true shepherd, a resolute and compassionate father, a prophetic grace for the church and for the world. May the Holy Father carry on, full of confidence and joy, the missionary reform he has begun, comforted by the prayers of the people of God 
and the renewed solidarity of the whole church. So you see, Francis is carrying on the mission, the mission for which he was chosen by the St. Gallen group, by the, the Pact of the Catacombs. That is the one thing that matters. <clears throat> Supich was saying that. That's exactly what he's saying. The Pope has a bigger agenda. He's got to get on with other things of talking about the environment and protecting migrants, carrying on the work of the church. He can't be bothered and distracted by these trivial matters of sexual predation going on in the church. My dear faithful, you know, you have to realize what's happening here. This is again the work of the modernists, this cabal of modernists who are hell-bent on bringing about their modernist church. They arrived at this high water mark for them at, at Vatican II. They decreed their new church and they're going to follow it through now. You have to accept the fact that the Novus Ordo in its entirety from beginning to end, from the Vatican II and the false theology that led up to Vatican II, you've got to realize that the Novus Ordo itself is corrupt from beginning to end. It's, it's, it's modernism from the egg. It is the product, it is born of modernism. And the only way to restore the church is to abandon and, and modernism for what it is and to reject the Novus Ordo, that is the religion of modernism. There are many people who simply will not give this up because they're willing to live with the illusion that the Novus Ordo is somehow Catholic. It is not. It was meant to replace true Catholicism. We cannot continue with the Novus Ordo and solve the problems that we're dealing with now. The modernists understand that very well. Why can't the Catholics seem to get that understanding? Well, if I may close just with this one point here, just to kind of show you in a, in a graphic way the evil that we're dealing with, there are two things that I'd like to point out to you. Okay, One of them has to do with the destruction of, the, of St. Joseph, the church, the church, the great church of St. Joseph of the Carpenters in Rome. Now, uh, a, f a couple of months ago, it made world headlines that the roof of that church in Rome, St. Joseph of the Carpenters, had collapsed into the nave. And some had even penetrated through the floor into the chapel below. Now, what was below that is the Mamertine prison. That is where St. Peter and St. Paul were held prisoners together in the dungeon of the Mamertine for eight months before they were taken out to be put to death, June 29th in the year 67. They had succeeded in converting their 47 fellow prisoners and their two guards, Procesus and Martinianus. They had baptized them all. The empire evidently recognized even burying these men alive in a dungeon cannot stop the power of God. We have to put them to death. They were taken out together, sent in different directions, St. Peter to the Vatican, St. Paul southward, outside the gates of Rome, and they were martyred there. As I say, June 29th in the year 67 AD. <clears throat> Above the Mamertine prison, you find the chapel, you find now a museum of the Mamertinum, and you find, above all, in the beautiful church of St. Joseph of the Carpenters. It is actually the center of all of the Catholic Carpenters unions throughout the world. All the Catholic Carpenters guilds are directed from there. That church collapsed. Very rare occurrence, as I say, it made worldwide headlines. Very strange event. Very strange. Another event that also is very, very <clears throat> troubling, and that is a cocaine-fueled homosexual party of clergymen going on in the shadow of the Vatican, in the very apartments attached uh, of, to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, in an apartment that actually should have gone to Cardinal Miller, who was the prefect at that time, that apartment was gathered, gathered given to a Monsignor, 
a lowly Monsignor who was a secretary to a cardinal. The cardinal's name was Francis Cucopaliero. Cucopaliero was named by John Paul II, and Francis, in a sense, inherited him. The man has been extremely influential in, under Francis, having a part in everything from choosing, choosing bishops, uh, writing documents on, um, on the uh, matter of um, giving Holy Communion, giving, giving communion to the, those living in adultery, uh, writing about the church's position with regard to homosexuality. He's actually had a hand in the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, uh, even under Cardinal Mueller. It is said that Miller was trying to enforce the law with regard to sexual predators in the church, and rather he was he was demoted from that position, removed from that position by Francis because he was trying to enforce the law. Coco Palmero was actually very much involved in the decisions of what to do with those who were accused and found guilty of sexual predation in the church, and he was always earning leniency for the homosexual predators always. This apartment that was given to one of his secretaries, this Monsignor Capozzo, I think his name was, <clears throat> this, month's, this apartment was the scene of a homosexual orgy that <clears throat> uh, was rife with drug abuse. The people who were living in the apartments around that actually called the Vatican police. It was so wild, so out of control. The Vatican police invaded the apartment and they found the clergy involved in the unspeakable, fueled by cocaine. And this very Monsignor, to whom the apartment had been given, this very secretary of Coco Palmiero, he was in a condition that should not be described, is not fit for human consumption. They were taken away, these young men. He was taken away. He was under arrest. But we were told that Coco Palmiero was nowhere to be found. He had nothing to do with this. Now it has just come out that he was actually there. Coco Palmiero, the cardinal, was actually there. The story of some of, the, some of those who were present is that he was actually presiding over that cocaine-fueled homosexual orgy going on in that apartment. And then when the Vatican police recognized him, they whisked him out of there because they realized the scandal the scandal to Francis, the scandal to Frankenchurch, really. So they got him out of there right away. But now there are witnesses there who were present at the party said he was present there, he was participating. Some say he was even presiding over the whole affair. What's the connection? The connection is that when a man is made a cardinal, he is assigned a church in Rome to be the pastor. That's who the cardinals are. That's how they can vote for popes. They're considered to be members of the clergy of Rome. And so each cardinal is given a church of which he becomes the pastor. You can imagine what church now, what church Coco Palmiero was given as cardinal. He was given the church of St. Joseph of the Carpenters, the church that just collapsed in an unprecedented display of destruction. Is there a connection? I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is a connection here. This is the typical. This is this is emblematic of the destruction that is that is going on under Francis right now, of the true Church. You can see it graphically displayed in the portrait of Paul VI, of long ago, and it is now happening with a vengeance under Francis. He's. He is now accomplishing what you see in that portrait of Paul VI with his bloody dagger. And there are people, what we're witnessing is something that is, is, so, is so diabolically evil. It is so blasphemous. It is so sacrilegious. They are building the church of the Novus Ordo. And Francis is the man who's commissioned to carry out the deed of murdering the true church of assassinating the true church, of finally putting it to death and replacing and building over the tomb of the traditional, the real Catholic church, this new church of the Novus Ordo, which will be the church of the Antichrist. We must not assist him in any way or have anything to do to help 
him accomplish this. We must resist him in every way we can. Please recognize that the problem is modernism. The problem is the Novus Ordo, and we have to reject the Novus Ordo and return to the practice of the traditional Catholic faith in its entirety. May God bless you.